Hey everybody, I am Stacy, the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy, and I'm an elite Dixie Belle retailer at the Rustic Willow here in Ardmore, Alabama, as well as um, a redesign with Primo Retailer and Content Creator. So tonight we are actually going to be working on a piece we worked on a couple weeks ago. Um, and you know what? I forgot to put the product list that we're going to be using in the description, but once the live is over, I'll go back and edit the description so that way you guys can see um, what we're working with tonight. If you don't remember, I would probably not remember. Um, but let me just go ahead and give you a little idea of what we did and where we're at now, and then we're going to be working on the top and decorating this up some. So if you guys are just jumping on, just say, hey, where you're watching from. Hey, Diane. Hey, Heather. Um, and you guys, I'll try to, as the comments come in, I'll try to answer any questions or anything like that. Um, and feel free to ask anything Dixie Bell or Redesign with Prima related. Um, it doesn't have to be something that we're working with tonight. But um, like I said, we did this live about two weeks ago. Hey, Cheryl. Um, so we did this live about two weeks ago, and first, of course, I started off with cleaning it with my white lightning. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, this is, I didn't wash it today, look, but anyway. Um, so I started off, of course, by cleaning it in white lightning. Hey, Wanda, it's good to see you. And you know what? I'm gonna, I want to post the pictures of your, your bedroom makeover. It looks so good. Um before you start another one anyway. <laughs> oh, hey mom, hey Pam. All right, so of course, like I said, I started off with cleaning it with white lightning. Um, and then I did a textured coat with gravel road and a sea spray, sea spray, which is a texture additive. And um, I'm gonna be honest, I can't remember if I used another color. I'd probably have to go back and look at the live. Um, Oh, okay, <laughs> but I probably have to go back and look at the live just to see. Um, sometimes I forget what I do when I just start painting. Um, so the second coat here is kind of an old world um, grungy finish. I wanted to do something in yellow and I'm working on kind of getting rid of some transfer scraps. So that's kind of what I how I came up with this. Hey, Thelma. Um, and this second coat is I've got some pine cone in here. That's some of the, the lighter brown color here. I used it as a shading. Hey, Helen. Um, so I used it as the shading with the pine cone. And then I also did some rebel yellow as well as some lemonade. Um, I had some buttercream in here. And then also, um, what else did I use? Oh, well, when I went back to do it, I forgot what colors I used, so I ended up throwing in some Daisy, too, because I thought I had used that, but I really didn't. Um, so, just to give you guys... Oh, and then I went back and I dry brushed everything with Coffee Bean, and I did show that technique as well a couple weeks ago whenever we painted it, but I did go over it some more um, just to really give it that definition and that depth. But one thing I was going to do, which I kind of changed my mind on, I was going to leave, so this is just an, like a vintage um, book table, and um, I was going to do this a different color in here, so this will give you an idea of how much layering makes a difference, even if you cannot see that first coat. Um, if you cover it totally, it does make a difference. So the base coat on this section right here was actually buttercream. The rest of it was gravel road and maybe something else. I don't remember. Um, but it is on the live from two weeks ago if you go back and look at that. Um, look how much lighter this is in here um, from the rest of the piece. And it's because that base coat is buttercream instead of um, gravel road. So it definitely makes a difference to layer it. Hey, Teresa. Okay. Oh, I didn't even see him go by. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, the top is still a raw base, and we are going to actually be working with some Voodoo Gel Stain, which is a water-based gel stain, and then we're going to be putting some transfers on tonight. Um, 
I don't think I'll get to it tonight, but I am gonna antique this space out a little bit more, probably with some Dixie dirt and wax. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna raise you guys up. You guys really won't be able to see me, but I'm gonna bring you in close on the table. Um, we're gonna give this top a really rustic look, and um, I'm not sure we'll get to it, but I'm gonna age out this transfer also. So first, let me bring you guys in and make sure you have a good view of the table. I think I might pop you up so you can almost look straight down on it, or maybe not. Well, let's see. There we go. That's not bad. Let me, whoops. Perfect. Okay, so before we get started, just to let you know, I'm actually gonna be using scraps from the Somewhere in France transfer. And this is the, the section that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna be putting it right on the top. And you're probably looking at this thinking that does not go at all um, because it's, you know, the nice gold color. It looks a little bit more maybe elegant, like it would go on a more elegant piece. But I'm going to end up aging this out. Um, but first, we are going to start with the Voodoo Gel Stain. And we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using some Black Magic some Up in Smoke, which is a nice gray color, and then some Tobacco Road here, which is just a brown. And we're gonna be kind of mixing those up. And if you'll notice on the edges here, probably see it on this side a little bit better, I did dab on some coffee bean, um, and I started to do that and do a little dry brushing and more sections, but I decided I wanted to do that part last. So um, we're gonna go ahead and stain first. So when you're using Voodoo Gel Stain, this stuff is awesome, you guys. It dries so fast. Um, you wanna shake it up really good though because it will separate. Um, oh, hey, and oh, the UK. Wow, it's probably what, midnight there? It's pretty late. All right, so once you get it all shaken up, you are ready to start using it. So you guys, um, I should have probably cleaned out my spout first on these, so we're gonna have to open them up, or some of them maybe. We're also, by the way, gonna be using a blue sponge to apply it. Um, and I actually wanna get two plates out. I'm gonna be using my little table over here when we start staining. But first, I wanna make, um, I wanna make a color Closer to the spout is, I've got it all clogged. I should have cleaned it out. I want to make kind of a dark gray color. And this is a small surface, so it's not really going to take me that much stain. Um, so you can use this. You don't, of course, have to mix up the colors, but I always like to make my own colors here. Um, so I'm just going to pour, oops, that's not what I meant to do, but that's okay because this will work out too. I'm gonna put a little gray in here. The reason I'm putting the gray in here is I've got the gravel road and that kind of gives me a little bit of a gray base. I actually meant to make a dark gray and then to use the tobacco road with that, but we're just gonna see how this mixes up and we're gonna improvise a little bit. And these colors I have not mixed together before but you know, Gravel Rose has a brown undertone to it. Um, so this actually should work out really well. And it does, actually it almost looks just like Gravel Road. And I'm not worried about getting a really good mix on this. Um, hey, Michelle. I know I, I don't get to see you live on here much. You guys, Michelle, I just saw her work for the first time on the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group. You guys don't belong to that. Definitely um, join. There's some amazing artists, um, great inspiration pieces, um, all of that good stuff. But um, I just saw some of her work for the first time, and it's so good. Um, so just classy and elegant. Um, I don't know why, but it makes me think of Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> um, 
and that's a compliment. <laughs> so here we go. Um, we're going to go ahead. I'm still going to put my tobacco road over here. Since I mixed those colors wrong initially, um, we're going to see how this turns out. So I'm going to put my colors off to the side just because I've, um, we're going to stain this right quick. So on the blue sponges, these are really dense sponges. They're great for staining. Um, so on this side, you'll see I have like a lot of little crystals or whatever. Um, I'm going to use this side, but you know, don't throw your sponges away whenever they get bad like this. If you put them in a, um, like a silk pantyhose, you want to use silk though. You can actually create, wrap them around, create a handle for it. It'll still keep, um, it'll keep those crystals from getting in your stain, but it will, um, it'll work just like it was brand new. Um, so don't ever throw these away, even if you forget to wash them out, which I do frequently. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this. Ooh, I really like this color. It is just like Gravel Road. And I'll probably end up doing two coats with this just because, um, just because I, I think I probably want it a little bit darker, I think. But all you're doing is just wiping it back and forth. Um, and I think I'm going to end up glazing this piece as well. Uh, but once I, one of the ways I'm going to age it out is once we put the transfer on, I'm actually going to protect over the transfer, but then I'm going to go over it with the stain again. But you guys, this water-based stain is so easy to work with. Um, you can add water to it if you want it to be really thin to make it look more like a wash. The biggest thing is it dries very quickly. You just want to make long strokes with the grain of the wood. And you just want to make sure that you're getting good coverage. So right here I have a little nick in the wood. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out there so it the stain gets down in it. Um, if I was applying it with like one of the premium chip brushes, which is another way that I do like to apply it, um, that wouldn't be an issue. But that's kind of just how you, I'm going over this a little bit. You want to be careful when you go over it, just right back to back that you're not pulling any of your stain back. I don't even think I'm gonna use the brown. I'm really liking this color. Um, like I said, that's the first time I've mixed these together and it was a total accident. So like Bob Ross says, happy accident. Um, and I think it's gonna look really good with that uh, gravel road undertone on this piece. I am glad that I didn't continue to do that with the, um, with the coffee bean here on the edges. Uh, because I am not, um, I'm not caring as much for how that turned out. So I've got a couple little spots in here. I'm just going to smooth over those. So I've got a little bit that overlapped on my edges. And like I said, this is a grungy look, so I'm fine with that. Layers are great. I'm just going to go ahead and dab my sponge that has a tiny bit of stain on it just around these edges to kind of work that in. I mean, layers, layers, and layers. It just adds so much depth to your piece. It makes a big difference. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna come in. Let's see, first I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the heat gun to dry it a little bit, and then Looks like beachy driftwood. Yes, it does. And once you dry brush it, if you add a little dry brush on it, it would really give it that effect. So once I do this, I'm actually gonna come in and I'm gonna do a little dry brushing with the coffee bean on it, kind of like I did um, around the edges of this piece. And I'll kind of give you guys a close-up of that if you can't see it, but that makes a huge difference when you're making this, this grungy look here. 
So like I said, water-based stain, it dries very, very quickly. But see kind of how I've got that, that dry brushing here on the edges? Um, it's kind of what I want to do on the top. I want this to look really, really aged. And I'm going to do multiple coats. Um, because I'm going to want to age out. So I'm using Coffee Bean. This is just a really, really dark brown. It also has some gray undertones if you're mixing it with any other colors. And I'm going to be using a premium chip brush here to apply it with. So I didn't get my, my towels out, but I've got one that I used from earlier. Um, and what you're going to want to do is you just want to put a very, very tiny amount of paint on your brush and then go ahead and just pretty much wipe it back. And then we're gonna come through here and very lightly go across this. What I want it to do is any areas, so when you use a water-based stain, it'll raise the grain a little bit in the wood. And what I wanna do is I wanna catch that grain. Um, you know, when you're doing this dry brushing, you can always add more paint, but it's really hard to take it back. So you want to wipe back as much as you can at first until you kind of get comfortable with the feel of it. And it's a very, very subtle, subtle look here. And I feel like sometimes this is very hard to see on camera. <clears throat> That's why I wanted to bring you in and kind of show you the close-up of the edges. So what it does too, it catches all these little nicks in the wood and it kind of hangs on there and it will just accentuate those and really make it look like it's naturally aged. So I think this is probably enough for our first coat. I'm gonna run the brush against the grain of the wood a little bit, just to give it almost an outline look on the edge here. Now you don't wanna go against the grain of the wood with the stain though, you always wanna keep it with the grain. Got a little linty piece on there. Okay, so that's kind of, I'm gonna step back. I wanna see how this color looks. Oh, I'm loving this color with the piece. I'll bring you guys back. Um, so you can really see how that looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and put on this transfer. So normally, so with the transfers, you wanna make sure that you're putting it on a very dry surface. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the heat gun again. But the Voodoo Gel Stain will completely dry typically within about 15 minutes. You can go ahead and start adding transfers. If you're putting a transfer though on a um, over paint, you want to, it's recommended 24 hours, but you absolutely want to make sure that you, I would at least wait overnight before you do it. Um, the transfers do not like moisture. So you want to be sure that everything is completely dry before you lay down a transfer. Um, if you don't, you can have some issues with it um, peeling uh, or cracking later on. Oh, thanks, Wanda. I love these aged finishes on the tops. And you know, anytime I can, I always try to stain the top of my pieces too. Um, I love the bottoms painted, but I love that wood grain showing on the top. And this one, normally I do strip. I've got a few videos on that. Well, that didn't sound very good, but normally I do strip the top and I've got a few videos on it, but this one I just went ahead and sanded down because it was such a small area. Um, and you guys, by the way, I am still gonna be putting, if you saw the first live, I am still gonna be putting this uh, vintage rustic transfer on as well. These are both redesigned with Prima. Um, this one I don't think I have in stock any longer, but I do have 
I do have the Somewhere in France transfer in stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this, I might have to turn around a bit and block you just so I can make sure I can get this um, centered correctly. But we're gonna go ahead and put this on the top now. And I lost one of my letters, but that's okay because like I said, I'm gonna be aging this transfer. And I could paint this back in if I didn't want to, but um, that's not the case. Sorry, I know I'm blocking the camera here, but I'm just eyeballing this, um, making sure that I get it on here straight. And before I press it down, my, my measurement method is of course my fingers. So I actually probably want to move this up just a tad bit. And you know, I've had this transfer for a long time. I'm hoping that, let's see, I'm hoping that it is still good. But if it's not, we'll have another video on how to fix it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and notice when I'm laying it and pressing it onto my surface. Oh, hey, Marianne. When I'm pressing it onto my surface, I'm going completely in one direction um, because I don't wanna have any bubbles or anything like that in it. So the transfers come with this particular transfer, I can't remember how many sheets it was. I think it was three or four. Um, they also come with the little tips and tricks instructions, as well as an application tool here. Um, so we're just going to start. First, I'm going to just start rubbing it on. You can see where I, I lost part of my letter here, and that's okay. Um, like I said, right now I'm trying to go through my inventory and use up all of these scraps that I have. Um, so this particular transfer is pretty old, um, and I just had this one section for quite some time. So I'm going in one direction so I can avoid getting any bubbles or anything like that. Um, and I'm just trying to press it down. I'm not actually trying to release it yet. And I'm a little concerned about the way it's releasing, but hopefully it'll be fine. So now when I start to release it, what I'm doing is, <coughs> and you can see the area where it's dark, it's not released yet. Once you get that lightened up look, that's where it's released. So as I'm pulling it up, I'm actually rubbing it down. Um, in the same spot that I'm trying to pull off. And that's gonna help it to release a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. Um, now these are letters, so typically speaking, they don't always release as easily. Um, it does take a little bit longer sometimes. <clears throat> the more outside points that you have on a transfer, the, um, the more difficult it is to release. If the transfer is all in one section, it will normally release just a little bit easier. But I've just gotta make sure that each of these points is making a connection. The reason it releases easier too whenever you only have one big section is because once those outside points that are releasing from the transfer let go, the inside is more likely to release, even if it's not stuck onto your piece, it's more likely to release pretty quickly. So, that's, that's kind of why it releases so much easier. But the key is, if I rub over here and I'm trying to peel off, that, that does not, that's not quite the trick. The trick is to rub exactly where you're peeling off. 
And sometimes, you know, if you're new to transfers, you can kind of cut this up into sections to make it easier to apply. So letters are probably my, my favorite when it comes to transfers, but they are definitely not my favorite to put on. Um, but I, I do love, love, love lettering here. So we're about halfway through. You know, also too, if you're having a problem with your transfer releasing, um, a trick to kind of help it release. So if you're doing, if you're using this method right here and you're still having a problem with it releasing, you can put some heat on it with the heat gun. Want to make sure that you constantly move the heat gun though, but that heat will help release the transfer a little bit and it'll make it a little bit easier to apply. Um, you want to be careful though when you use the heat gun with a transfer just because it can cause the transfer to bubble if you don't move the heat gun around and you just leave it in one section. It can also make your paint bubble. So you just want to be a little bit mindful of that. So actually, you know what? This is not looking as, um, I really, I really like it um, even without the extra distressing. I will distress it just because, like I said, I've had some issues um, with the I lost part of the letter whenever I peeled it back. But really, I'm loving, 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 loving how this is looking. I don't know, once I look at the whole piece, this might look better than I thought it was going to in my mind, um, as is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna start rubbing from the other direction. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and press that down going across. And oops, here, let me bring you over a little bit so you're still able to see how this is releasing. Oh, hey, Susan. All right, so like I said, you're just, can you still see? Yeah. So you're just rubbing exactly where you're releasing as you go. I'm trying to get these letters down here down. Um, so that I can just go ahead and start working on the top. So another thing that you can do, and I really don't recommend this normally, but the way this transfer is releasing, um, another little trick, and this usually works best if you have one solid piece where only the outside has to connect and it's all, you know, one image, but you can actually kind of catch a little bubble and roll it back as well. So that'll, that will also help release the transfer. Um, and that'll make it actually go really quick if you have a large section. When you have these smaller sections though like this, normally I do not use that method. Let me see. I'm gonna rub with this other hand. I'm hoping that you can still see what I've got going on here. And we just got a little bit more to go. And actually, I may just end up painting in that letter. I don't know. All right, so I've got the whole thing released so you can kind of see. It's pretty subtle. Well, actually, you guys have a little bit of a glare. I haven't burnished it down yet, but let me kind of show you without the glare, kind of what that looks like. So I'm actually really loving it the way it is. Um, this particular transfer, and you guys, if you missed the beginning of this, 
I am going to go back. I forgot tonight to put um, the product list in the description, but I will go back and do that. This one is somewhere, well, hopefully you can see it. I know that glare is there. And um, this is somewhere in France. Let me see. Well, still got that glare. And I don't even have my ring light on. Um, but this one is somewhere in France. If you can see, there you go. You can see the picture on here. So it's actually a really big transfer. Um, I mainly use this on a large piece of furniture and I just had this one section left. So the next thing you want to do is when you have a transfer, um, you want to definitely, oh, hey, Philippa. Um, you definitely want to go ahead and burnish it down. Um, so especially with letters, um, when you're burnishing, sometimes the halo around them um, isn't as secure. So you don't want to do, when you're burnishing, you don't want to do it too hard. Um, and I am using a finishing pad. Um, you can use your finger just to press it down. Kind of like I'm going, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this because I want to make sure they're stuck down before I really get into burnishing it. Um, so I've got a little part there that isn't really stuck. That halo isn't stuck, it's loose. And I don't wanna leave that, so I'm actually gonna kind of pick that a little bit. And I'm gonna put some more pressure on it with my finishing pad. So I took part of the letter off, but I'm okay with that. I did that, I'm fine with that, because like I said, I want this to look distressed and aged. I don't want it to look like it's brand new. But you do want to make sure it's all burnished down because when you go to protect this, and I'm putting more pressure here because I want to distress these letters a little bit. Um, you can also use a, um, like a very fine grit sand pad. But if you use that fine grit sanding pad, one thing that you will do there is... Um, Sometimes the ink will um, catch whenever you're sanding it. So you can use acetone if you have that issue and you don't want that ink on the halo part of it. So not a whole ton of pressure. I'm distressing this one over here a little bit. When you wanna take some off, you can put more pressure on it. Um, with letters, it's super easy because like I said, they have so many connection points. And for me, I use this, I probably use this, I opened it probably about um, a couple years ago, uh, this particular transfer, and I'm really just trying to go through my inventory and get a lot of my scraps done. So this is, you know, actually, I think I kind of want to leave this top the way that it is. Um, I'm really liking it, and I don't want to do a whole lot more on it. So I'm going to go ahead and back you guys up, and we're going to we're gonna work on one of the other transfers that I have here that I want to put on this piece. Um, but just so you can see how that turned out, I'm really loving it. And I love how it looks with the piece. That mix that we made on top with the three Voodoo Gel Stain colors really goes beautifully with that gravel road undertone. Um, oh, hey, Jennifer. All right, so we're going to drop down. And the other transfer that I'm wanting to use, give me just a second here. <clears throat> the other transfer that I'm wanting to use some scraps. Thanks, other is the vintage rustic transfer and this came in i think this one came in four sheets too maybe three i'm not really i can't really remember here we don't have a whole ton of time so i might only do one of these sections <clears throat> but let's see i'll go ahead and roll it out and kind of show it to you so this was one that for me was a little bit harder to cut up, but I did. I actually did a Lazy Susan with it, but you can kind of see how it looks here. It's got all those yellows, grays, and browns in it. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm really thinking what I want to do is take these birds and 
You know, my original thought was to run them inside um, where you would put the books, but I kind of don't want them to be covered up. Um, oh, hey, Amber, it's good to see you. I kind of don't want them to be covered up, so I'm thinking about maybe running them down here. Um, and I know this sounds bad. I know I've got his head somewhere. Um, let me see if I have enough of that to be able, here we go, to kind of piece that together and make it look like everything isn't just floating. Um, and that's the one thing about this particular transfer. You almost have to put it on as a section or it's a little more difficult to cut up. And actually, we don't have a whole ton of time, so I've got one piece cut off here. Um, let's just go ahead and do this piece. I might put this on the inside because I do think I want those birds on the outside. So I kind of want to see what it will look like potentially on the top here. Um, yeah. I just like that on the top. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this bottom section. And I think I wanna go like right here with it. Um, let's see, if I do the postal birds, I wanna make sure that design wise, I kind of have a nice flow. Um, so let's see, if I put this one down here, and I go ahead and get these birds in this one book corner. Actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this side because I'll have the other birds over here, so I just wanna make sure that it's a good flow. Um, <clears throat> I know, Amber, I missed you too. I haven't seen you as much lately. Hopefully you're feeling better. All right, so what you wanna do, and by the way, when you these come in two sections, your design is on the clear piece. When you um, peel these apart, you wanna make sure don't touch this, don't let it fold back on each other. Um, if that happens, then it's pretty well kind of ruined. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just lining this up so the branches come directly to the edge one thing I don't like is when the transfers look like they're just kind of floating on the furniture. Beautiful bird transfers from Javi and Mommy, and they were 2% off. They coordinate with, oh yeah, with the new silk colors. Yeah. You know, I've gotten one of those transfers. I just wanted to try them out to see how they worked, um, but I never opened it. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I wish... I just kind of wanted to see what they look like as far as did they look more like a decal or a transfer or how the halo was on them. Um, but like I said, I've never even opened it. Maybe I'll make that a, a point. Right now I'm trying to go through all, I have so much stuff. It's crazy. All right, so again, I just rub this down, make sure it was stuck pretty well. And then we're gonna go through and do the same thing. Um, just as it's releasing. And this is another one with the branches and everything. You have a lot of points, release points. Let me see if I can drop you guys down so you can have a closer view of this. Oh, you still there? Perfect, okay, good. Hopefully you guys didn't flip around um, and, and you're not having to watch sideways. For whatever reason, my phone flipped the image around and technically you are not supposed to be able to um, do that once the live starts. So um, are you guys watching sideways or is it still straight up and down for you? All right, so maybe Facebook did a new thing where you can switch from portrait to landscape mode while you're live, but you used to not be able to, but everything changes all the time with all of the updates. So. So this is one of those sections now that I'm getting into the actual flower and the bird here and I've got past part of the branches where 
kind of going in the wrong direction for it. But what I was talking about where you can kind of catch a bubble and you can kind of just um, oops, make it go a little bit quicker. I'm going backwards, um, so I can't quite catch it just as well, but I did have some parts of it release. So I have this rubbed down and I'm kind of working more towards the center because I want it to release in the center. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have it laid out and stuck down before you do that because otherwise you can end up with a bubble in your transfer and you have to deal with those. And if you have a bubble, that's a, a point that moisture can enter through. Um, and then you could later on, like I said, have issues, you know, with cracking, peeling, stuff like that. So you want to be careful about that. And actually, I'm going to come down from the top a little bit here. But we've almost got this released completely on. And I'm trying to make it so you can really see without my hands being in the way. I just wanna make sure the outer points are stuck down. The reason I like to release it in the center once I have most of the transfer done as well is because when you're coming and let's say I'm releasing off where this little branch edge is right here, um, if I'm releasing off at that point, it's really easy for it to tear away from the piece. So once I get to the point where I'm ready for it to release, I do like to release it in the middle because there's no um, additional points of connection. So normally you will not um, have that issue. I've only had that happen once or twice, but this is kind of my method for avoiding that. So you can see the bird down here. And of course, I just wanna go ahead and burnish it on. So like I said, my, my favorite method for burnishing is to use um, the finishing pad, which is by Dixie Bell. And by the way, these two transfers are redesigned with Prima. Um, and the Beauty Gel Stain is a Dixie Bell product. So I'm kind of burnishing it down. I want to make sure it's really stuck here. Um, like I said, for me, I've had these transfers open for a long time. And I also, I'm not very good at storing them, so I did not keep the little fresh pack in there. Um, so I just wanna be a little extra careful with these and make sure that they are stuck down. And I will probably go through, like I said, I'll definitely go through and distress and age this one out a little bit. Um, we're kind of out of time today, but that is it. Um, how you add the transfer and as far as the um, voodoo gel stain goes, we've got that done as well. So I should be, yeah, I'm still sideways. Um, hopefully, I don't even know if you can see me. I'm not quite sure what you can see on here. Um, but I'm just trying to read some of the comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, this is kind of odd. So yeah, I don't think my phone realized it rotated. I tried to rotate you guys back around and um, I got an error message on my screen. So hopefully you can still see me. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. Um, if you know anyone who could use this video, please share it. Um, if you're local, like I said, um, you can get these products at the Rustic Willow in Ardmore. Um, otherwise, you can send me a message. I don't have a lot of the products on my website, but... Um, I do have a few there, uh, but um, thank you so much again for watching. I'll go through the comments because I'm pretty sure I've missed them here at the end, but you guys take care and have a great night. Bye-bye.